Food webs, or ecological networks as they're more generally known, are to do with the links between species. So traditionally, ecologists have um, looked at species lists, patterns of abundance and diversity. But over the last decade, there's been increasing interest in how the, these species are linked together. Because that has a huge effect on things like provision of ecosystem services, such as pollination and pest control, um, our capacity to, to mend these communities if they're damaged and degraded, their response to, to stress and so on. The, the structure of the study we used was, um, well, it was a big ambitious project. And what we did, first of all, was to choose 10 pairs of organic and conventional farms in the southwest of the UK. Uh, so we had 20 farms. To actually choose 20 farms, you've got to look at 80. So there's a lot of legwork involved in actually getting the, um, the choice right. You've got a list of criteria. The farms need to be matched in size and type and so on, or else you're comparing chalk and cheese. Having got our, net, our, our farms in place, and these go from Stroud down to Shepton Mallet, basically, we then put together, we, we constructed ecological networks for each of the farms. So this is a, a two years' worth of work. We're sampling the farms once a month, all 20 farms. So you've got a huge team of people out there gathering up, counting plants, collecting caterpillars and leaf miners and rearing out the parasitoids. And you use that information to put together, to construct these, these networks, which show who's eating who on the farms. Um, we can then analyze the structure of those networks. So that's the descriptive stage. The next stage is a manipulative stage, because to me, a food web project, you know, you should always have some, you, you either have a perturbation that's kind of something, something envir some environmental woe that's affecting it in some way, or you deliberately manip manipulate it and predict what will happen. So our manipulation in this case was to introduce a novel pest to the farms. And obviously we can't use a, a real live pest, or else you know, the farmers weren't like that at all for all the obvious reasons. Um, so what we did, we had a surrogate pest. So we introduced a plant that actually does not grow on farmlands at all. It's a plant called pyracantha, which is a very urban shrub. And um, we planted out a small plot of 50 plants on each farm. We then introduced a species of leaf miner that's specific to that plant. So it doesn't, you know, won't grow on any crops. It won't move into the native habitat at all. And we then used that as kind of a bioassay for the health of the parasitoid communities on each of the farms. And so for the following years, well, after we'd put the plant in, we sampled the leaf miners and saw how many species of parasitoid we got on the organic and the conventional farms, and also the percent mortality, how well it was controlled. Specifically, what was the biotic resistance to a novel pest on the two types of farms? Uh, we've got two levels of information concerning the results. The first one is that there's more biodiversity on the organic farms than the conventional farms. Significantly more species are found at all three trophic levels in the network. So more plants, more herbivores, and more parasitoids. That didn't translate into an increase uh, ecosystem service of pest control though on the organic farms, which was really interesting. The results might be different if we repeat the work in a more intensively farmed area. But here in the southwest of England, which is a hotspot of organic farming, we got the same level of, of biotic resistance, as we call it, um, to, to a novel pest on the conventional farms. And that means, you know, the conventional farms really do have these services intact. And perhaps learning to manage that network of interactions better, we might be able to reduce pesticide use in the long term. The organic farms can certainly be uh, reservoirs of, of biodiversity in, in the landscape. Um, we don't know that much about the movement between, um, you know, the, the movement of parasitoids at the farm scale, so it's, it's, it's a tricky one to answer. And I've actually, you could actually say that organic farms are providing reservoirs of, of um, biocontrol agents so that move on to conventional land. That's one, one approach. You could also say they're actually, you know, gaining from the pest control on neighboring farms. We don't know which way the benefits are, are going at the moment. They're certainly, having organic farms around is certainly good for biodiversity in, um, you know, in, in the landscape.